Well, the plot thickens. There appears to even be more structure down there. There's a massive hole here. This is insane. Good afternoon. How are you guys? This week, I'm searching for a mine and I am searching for the Silver Spear Mine. Now, once upon a time, the Silver Spear was apparently one of the larger mines here at Cerro Gordo. And I knew nothing about this mine until Christmas this year. And at Christmas this year, I was given this. This is a journal from a woman named Frances who lived at Cerro Gordo from 1939 to 1942. And those years are super interesting to me because most of the history books here stop in the 1930s because that's when large scale mining stopped. But here's the thing. The Silver Spear has a complicated history. When I started researching it, turns out the verdict is split. Half the people think that the Silver Spear is a mine that is above the Hoist House, and half the people think that it's a mine above the Hart Camp, which are nowhere close to each other. And as I asked locals, people with a good familiarity with Cerro Gordo, their answers were split too. And it just seemed, the more I researched, the more confused I got. So the point this week is to get out there explore, find these two sites, hopefully gain access to them, and learn more about Cerro Gordo's history that I knew nothing of. I'm gonna read some of the excerpts from the journal. These start in 1939 and end in 1942. December 4th, 1939. Stanley got a job at the Silver Spear Mining Company, 220 miles north of Los Angeles up the mountain east of Keeler. The elevation of the mining camp was 8,500 feet. I liked it up there. I cleaned the cabin and put up curtains, which I must have brought from Minnesota. There was no electricity, and I melted snow for much of our water and did lots of washing and cleaning. I wrote a lot of letters, and we got a lot of mail. We heated with wood and also cooked with it, most of the time. October 17th, no checks, out of groceries at the cook shack. Cottons are out of groceries too wanted to sell 100 shares for $6. We lent them the money instead. Everyone's short of money and wants to leave, except me. November 29th, moved down to Cerro Gordo from Silver Spear. Disinfected, scrubbed floors, walls, woodwork. February 11th, storm. Blew ashes out of the stove and pictures off the walls. March 1st, doctor said February 24th and I'm probably pregnant, but not to announce it yet. November 6th, Men got $50 each from Hart. Blood pressure still up. Baby weighs six pounds, 11 ounces. November 12th, Curtis went into the army. December 9th, went down to Christians to sew. Heard the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and then we are at war with Japan. Don't feel too well. September 17th, Flack and Hart want us to stay, but we are leaving. It's too bad all of these dreams are shattered. I would just love to go up there one more day and reminisce. And so it was really exciting to me. And as I was reading through it, the mine she kept referencing was something called the Silver Spear. It was interesting to me because I've read, you know, I've read almost all the books about Cerro Gordo and there's nothing called the Silver Spear in the books that I've read. So this week, my goal, my hope, is that I can find the Silver Spear. Maybe use some of the reference photos that I was sent in this with this journal to help me narrow it down. And once I find the Silver Spear, to explore it. That's my hope. As you know, I love history and I love the history of Cerro Gordo especially. And that's what makes something like this just so special and unique to me. You know, it just gives me a glimpse into a period of time I knew nothing about. So as I researched more, it turns out the Silver Spear has a bit of a complicated history. It's a mine that nobody can seem to agree on where it is. Uh, it's changed names over the years. I've asked some locals that have a good familiarity with Cerro Gordo and the decision split. Half of them think it's one place, half of them think it's at the other. And when I go online, it's almost the same thing. Half of the research shows that the Silver Spear Mine is a mine that is directly above the hoist house here at Cerro Gordo. All right, so I have my coordinates 
of what potentially is the Silver Spear Mine. As you can see, it's not too far from here, so it'd almost be hiding in plain sight. So my goal today is just to hike up, see if I can find it. If it's there, discover how I can get into the mine and come back a different day with more supplies. Um, if it's not there, then I'll have to investigate the other potential option that is the Silver Spear Mine. But I'm very excited given the history I've learned and the fact that not only did I not know this mine existed, and I learned it from the letter, this mine is like very close to town. So the fact that I haven't even stumbled upon it in my regular hikes is super surprising to me. And so that's why I'm not incredibly confident that this mine is going to be up here, just because I can't believe that a mine of that magnitude would be so close to town. And I wouldn't know anything about it, but stranger things have happened. So let's go give it a shot. It was funny looking at the GPS coordinates as I was standing from the hoist, I realized it wasn't more than a 10 minute walk from there, but I couldn't see anything from not a hoist level. All right, so there's some track and there's this thing. So we gotta believe that there was some type of operation up here. And this giant, what seems to be a hole. Whoa. There's a massive hole here. It appears to be man-made of some type. This is crazy. I feel, I feel dumb a little bit because I've hiked miles around this town to try to find different mines. This one was literally just above a building I've been to a hundred times. Just blend into the, what the heck is that? Like, it looks like there's like almost an entrance over there. This thing is insane. There's track down there. There might be an entrance there. There's track over there. It seems to just kind of be coming out of the side of the mountain right now. And then it almost looks like there's like a ridge and another cave up there or a hole, I should say. <laughs> oh man. From the front, it just looks like part of the mountain. And now that I'm here, I mean, there's track down there. That's probably a hole. I'm gonna go over there first. This is insane. The other weird thing though is this, it's like these appear to be massive holes that they mined. So it could be two things. One, they could have taken it out, but they didn't really do open pit mining back then. So what this makes me believe is this. I think somewhere below us, they were mining a big stope. So you know those big rooms and they overstoped, meaning they took out too much and this is all collapsed down into a former stope. And that would be the reason that there's no like buildings around here or machinery. You know, it just doesn't make sense that, I mean, I just got here, but there doesn't appear to be any buildings or things other than the track. I guess that's strange. I don't know why there's track way up here, but the way this hole is, I never seen anything like that. And the only thing I can think is this went down. Instead of them digging this down, this collapsed down and there used to be a bigger hole there. But let's investigate a little bit. See what this is all about. This thing is crazy. This little, almost looks like a bobcat den though. I don't have my light with me. But I see light back there, so that must just lead back down. I don't wanna fall down there. I came back with a rope, I could definitely get down there. This is mind blowing to me. It's incredible that, you know, I've been here for two years owning the place and now 10 months straight, feel like I walked every single part of this town. And then you find 32 bottles one day and then next you find a whole other mine that you have no idea about. So I'm excited about it. That's what gets me excited about Cerro Gordo is that I'm gonna be here for the rest of my life and I imagine I'm just gonna keep finding little secrets and hidden away treasures like this for a long time. All right, let's go up that way and see what that other thing was. This is insane. 
there's timbering right there. I don't have my light, but you know, after I climb down from up there, it appears this is a whole other mine. See, over there, I want to say they're following a vein. It's just crazy because I, man, you can't see, I just gotta get my light, that's easy. I'll come back tomorrow with my light and some rope. Man, what's going on up here? Look at that rock. It's like wedged between, like ready for me to walk under it and just slice me in half. So let's just walk fast. Ooh. Yeah, there's definitely a more serious operation up here. You know, that hole could be, look at that thing, look at that borehole. I mean, there's piping, probably for steam. Oh, yeah, dynamite box. Extra Hercules. So they're blasting up here. They weren't blasting for no reason. These are a really crazy little ravine, man. The ladder. There's a timber there. There's a clue. Why would there a timber be there shoved in? So all this is new. All this stuff on top is new. Collapse or fall in. And maybe that was a tunnel that was actually going all along like this out into who knows what. There's a timber up there. Maybe I could get back out of the stope and investigate more. So this leaves at least two or three holes to investigate tomorrow. I'm still not 100% convinced this is the silver spear that they're talking about. But I mean, it's a big mine. So it's either part of the union or the silver spear. So here's that timbering I saw from down there. I don't know if it leads to anything, but there is what appears to be cable up there. So then I keep hiking up, it'll give me a better vantage point down. See everything I have to work with tomorrow. Come back with rope, flashlight, get into this thing. But for right now, there's another context clue. So I'm gonna scurry along up, see if there's anything back down. I was starting to plan these hikes that were miles and miles to get to more mines and plenty left right here. Well, it appears by the color of the clay on something else. Timbering, old timbering, hand hewn. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Talking about context clues, square nail. Square nail stopped being used in 1890. So this is part of the original mine. Oh man, what's down there? It might just be a pit, but let me get to the other side, see if it connects into something. Just super hesitant because I don't want to fall down there today. Today's just the recon day. All right, let's see. It might, might have to get higher, get a better vantage point. It might go off to the right. Wow. I had no idea this was here. A lot of things to do tomorrow then. Oh, shh. Woo! Don't want to do that right at the hole. At least four holes to go into, including this one. Looks like there used to be a ladder nailed to that. It's lost over the years, all square nails. That'll be something. Well, I would say today's a success. Found a couple new mines that I knew existed. They might lead somewhere, they might not. 
but it's just the prospect of them leading somewhere that's super exciting. You know, just a glimmer of hope. So I can't wait to rest up. I'm gonna do some more research tonight about the silver spear. What's also interesting, look at that. See that track just coming out of the middle of the mountain over there? That doesn't make any sense to me. Unless again, this is all collapsed. But I'm gonna do even more research tonight, see if I can find anything else. And tomorrow, get back at it. I came home, the sun set, and I did more research. Well, the plot thickens. After discovering those two holes today up by the Union, I got pretty confident that that was in fact the Silver Spear. And I found a little biography of a guy named Reuben Cook Spear. He was quite the miner in this area. His mine was once known as the Black Diamond that then got renamed as the Lead Queen and then known as the Silver Spear Mine. So it seems like this mine has changed identities numerous times throughout the years. So now, knowing that I have the Black Diamond or Lead Queen to work with, I went back to the geology report and there's no black diamond in it, but there is a lead queen. And if I look up the lead queen, it says, the heart mine variously known as Cerro Gordo extension and the lead queen is near the Inyo crest one mile north, northwest of Cerro Gordo. And then there's a map. And if you look at the map, one mile north, northwest of Cerro Gordo is not where I was hiking with the two big holes. It's up at the top around the bend past the Hart camp. And it's interesting because Hart took over the mine in 1926 and he mined it for 15 years. And there's a cabin above Cerro Gordo called the Hart camp. And they refer to Hart in this diary quite often. So this is the discrepancy. Some think that it's here. And that's where the GPS coordinates show me, which is right by the Belshaw shaft, which is the main hoist house. So imagine up in this area. However, if you think it's at the heart camp, shh, there, not even close. And both have been called the silver spear. I don't know. And so next morning I decided to pack my things. It started snowing at that point, but it's supposed to go away. So I ripped my razor around the snow up past the heart camp and I walked over to the remains of some of the mine up there. So this is Hart Camp, and it's not all the way up to where the Hart Mine was. This is a little camp. And as you can tell, I picked a tremendous time to do a scouting mission when it's just starting to snow. On a typical day, you see all of Owens Valley right there, and it's beautiful. But today's a little bit different story. Hart, I believe, was the man who owned the town during the period in which the diary, diary was written. So this was his little spot. But his mine is further up that way. Supposedly, or potentially the Silver Spear mine is further up that way. So I'm gonna head up, see what type of equipment would be needed to fully explore it and see if I can get any more context clues of if that's the actual mine I'm looking for. Hopefully this stuff stops. It's supposed to get better later today, but we'll see. All right, this is the trail over to what I remember to be a little bit of old mining stuff. The problem is I just remember it as little scraps. I can't envision things like a hoist house and all sorts of buildings that they show in the Silver Spear in some of the photos. So let's go over here and check it out. There's part of the structure. You can just see a roof of something. And look, it looks like an animal went through here not too long ago. It's gonna be difficult to get a sense of those photos with the perspective because there's no real perspective right now, but let's go take a look. Let's see what's out here. So we need to come back with, hopefully it clears up. I mean, 
This is more stuff than I remember. It's like a boiler of sorts, a roof from some structure here. Something collapsed. Oh, I think I got a hole there. Oh. Yeah, it goes pretty deep. So it might've been, you know, they talked about like a hoist house and shaft. That could have been a shaft there straight down. If I had some help or just some more time, it wasn't freezing, I would take away some of this wood. I'll bring in a big flashlight, see how deep that goes. I mean, there's some other structure over here that could have been something substantial. Is that a mine? This is what could have been at one point a shaft. There's almost something from a bed, which it would indicate people are living here. I'm sure there's a lot of collapse stuff there, but my fear is because there's snow on the ground, I can't see what might be a deep hole down. This is track. That's substantial. Huh. There appears to even be more structure down there. I wonder if they talk about it being two levels at any point. Yeah, there appears to be timbering all the way down. Beautiful Death Valley, California. <laughs> Been quite the day to do the scouting job. I might come back later when it stops, get a better idea, but this is, this is definitely more than I remember up here. I'd be really interested in this. If I take away this wood, how deep this goes, and if there's levels of any type. I like this. This is at least an adventure in its own right. I mean, there's a lot here. So for now, let me get back and warm up a little bit. It started snowing, that was supposed to stop. I decided to come home, research even further. And it's funny, the more I research it, the more confused I get. It doesn't provide me any answers. And my plan was to gather gear and go explore these things the next day. But as what happens living in a ghost town sometimes, nature didn't really care about my plans. And that night it started dumping snow. We've gotten a ton of snow. I got a national weather alert snow warning on my phone. As you can see, it's quite cold even now. I've grown to love the winter up here. I mean, it's beautiful. The way the light shines off the first snow or how even the rabbit weed looks with icicles in it. You know, the first dusting will show you trails up the mountain that you've never seen before. An area that I've never seen an animal will suddenly come alive with tracks. And it reminds me that those things are always there. I just never saw them. And that reminds me that there's always a lot more to see, especially here. And I've also come to accept that my life up here is much more dependent on nature. You know, if you're in a city and it snows, most of the time that snow gets plowed and you can mostly go about your day. But here, a big blizzard can completely change your day, week, or month. You know, this week I was really looking forward to exploring the Silver Spear. You know, and then a sunny evening sky turned cloudy overnight, and less than 24 hours later, I was in the middle of a blizzard. And that just reminds me that you can't always control what happens, but you can always control how you respond. You know, instead of getting mad, cursing the weather gods, and not making a video this week, I can seek out a new type of adventure. And that's what I tried to do. Well, I don't think I'm exploring any mines today. That was the plan, that this snow would be less today, not more, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Can't see very far. It's awfully windy, so it doesn't seem like the most safe thing to venture into a bunch of mines, which is a bummer. I was getting my gear ready. I was excited. I was ready to go down there, but maybe instead I can have a little fun. I'm going to try to make Cerro Gordo ski run. 
I got some sleds too I'm gonna play around with. I mean, this doesn't look like it's going away today, so if I can't get into the mines, let's try some snowboarding. Why not? Right down here. Fresh powder, as I say. Got my sled that already blew halfway across the town. This is what we're working with. I got myself a snowboard, which I just realized is goofy foot, which I am not, so that's gonna be fun. I'll figure it out, I'm resourceful. And potentially more exciting is just this sled. I mean, if you can't have fun on one of those, what type of person are you? I ended up having a blast. You know, I, I love sledding around town. I broke out the snowboard for the first time. I bought snowboard boots recently. $15. I am very bad at snowboarding, in fact. I've actually broken a leg and I've gotten a concussion snowboarding and skiing before. I ripped around in the razor. And now I really want to get better at snowboarding. You know, it introduced a new hobby to me. I think with enough snow, I could even snowboard mostly down the road to the bottom of the mountain. And that would be an awesome adventure. And this seasonality of life up here is something I never got in Austin, but I've grown to love. You know, the fact that mother nature has other plans and I really can't do much about it. I just hope in the future, as my plans get turned on their head, that I can kind of continue to remember this lesson and practice it. Next week, I'm getting into the Silver Spear. Whether it's the one above Heart Camp or one above the Hoist House, I'm getting into them both. We got a double header coming next week. I don't love breaking up adventure videos into two. I'd much rather just get it all said and done in one video. But this week, it just wasn't possible with the weather conditions. So I really hope you stay tuned and tune in next week as I finally get in to the Silver Spear Mine.